Hello and welcome to another video. Here I'm going to be showing you my calculator solution for the final project in Foundations for the Odin project. So here's my calculator, a very happy calculator in the middle of a nice green pasture. And it works as it should. It passed the tests of the project. Uh, but you can always visit the repository online. The link is in the uh, description. Uh, or you can leave a comment with any questions. But here I have a calculator div with uh, another div for this header here and this text and another div for this screen and then a separate div for the buttons and I split up the smaller buttons into their own div and then this these three larger buttons down here or two larger buttons down here into another div and these are organized using CSS grid it took a little work to get this all lined up um, but I think in the end it looks okay and in CSS I also have a hover um, on all of these so they change color when you hover over them and also on click they go darker as well I just want to show you quickly the HTML it's fairly straightforward so all of my buttons here have their own each number has their own class each um, operator sorry each button that is like delete and clear has their own class button and then each operator has a button operator class just to categorize like buttons and then each button has its own unique ID so I can pull it out uniquely and the same down on the three buttons on the bottom here's the music for or the the cow moo and then a footer and then my script tag at the bottom and then in the CSS so I'm using an imported Google Google font I'm using Flexbox to arrange the page uh, I did credit uh, this person here because I use their CSS to provide a kind of a like a shadow effect on this calculator title and the rest of it's pretty straightforward I think most of it you would have seen other than I use CSS grid to display these buttons here as well as oh no so the big buttons I did use grid as well I thought you flexbox but it was grid as well these buttons so the uh, like backspace and clear I use flexbox on those instead and then this is how I applied the hover um, and click uh, to change color. So there's background color and then the hover and then the click for changing the shades of colors. So like this. Okay, so let's look at the JavaScript. So I have some constants defined here. So I have the screen, which is I call current, but it's really the screen, the output on the calculator. We have zero, clear, delete, point, equals, and the music as well that gets played. So these are all linked up through get element by ID to these variables. And I'm using constant this time instead of let. But I also do have an object here. So I let this uh, object, this object gets updated depending on how the user uses the calculator. And in this object, as I described briefly, there is a num1, there's an operand, and there's a num2. So it would be like one would be num1 plus would be the operand and two would be num2 and then you uh, you would run that function and you would get a product and that would be three so I do have a comments in here where I'm describing that buttons one through nine they, they do have the same code to determine uh, which object key to add the number two so whether or not that's num1 or a num2 but instead of writing it out nine times I used what I learned in the Etch-a-Sketch project and I used a for loop to add an event listener to each button. So what this is doing here is I have a variable num buttons and that's equal to the uh, class name of the element tag with button number. So there's nine of those and for each one of those loop through to the length of num buttons which is nine and each to each button add an event listener with a click event so you're part sorry you're passing into add number which is defined below the e which is uh, this div that's getting passed in and you're pulling out the text content so you're passing in the text content as a parameter into add number and what that's essentially doing is if you click button nine well you're passing in that text content nine into add number so it's pulling out the the number nine and this is a much more efficient way of doing this rather than writing out, out nine times and this did save me 170 lines of repetitive code because I originally did 
to get this calculator working, write it out nine times, and then I came back and refactored it to be much more efficient. And then I did the exact same thing with the operators. And then zero has its own event listener because uh, it's different from one through nine because I do not allow re repetition. So if you type in zero, you can't keep typing zero, right? You should only have one zero. So if you want to type five, well, you can type up to 10 fives. And so in order to get that to work, so you can only add one zero. Remember, I have a num1, an operand, a num2, and a product in my object. And you don't have to set it up this way. You don't have to use an object. I just use an object because, well, we just learned about them and I wanted to get practice using objects and having key value pairs. But what this add zero is saying is if there is a product already and there is no operand, then return false, right? So if we have a product, right? and there's no operand, well then you're going to return false. You can't add a zero. Um, else, if there is no operand and there is no num1, then you're going to, s you're basically starting from a blank canvas, then your object num1 is going to become a zero, like this. And you're gonna show that on the screen. Else, if there is no operand and if there is no object num1 equal to zero, and object num1 length is less than 10, then you're gonna add zero to it. So you could say five, and you could add as many zeros as you want, right, because the, the num1 is not zero. However, if there is no num2, and there is an operand, then num2 is gonna become zero, and you're gonna show that. So if you say six plus, now we have, we're entering a num2, so you can 6 plus 0. Else, if there is a num2 and it is not z equal to 0 and it's less than 10, then keep adding 0 to it. So I can't keep adding zeros to this because it doesn't qualify for that. But if I have a 5 in here, oh, I'm going to have to go 6 plus uh, 5, then I can continue adding zeros after that 5. So hopefully you get the sense of how I'm using this object. Again, num1, operand, num2, and product. Uh, and then to add a number, so any number one through nine, we're using that E that gets passed in from this event listener up here. So it's passing in the value of that div that gets clicked off that button. And again, I'm using products, operands, num1s, and num2s in the object here, and my entire um, logic is built around the use of those four keys. So running through this very quickly, so if there is a product uh, and there is no operand, then return false. So you can't add anything else, right? So if you have six plus one equals to the product of seven, well, you can't add any other number, right? Because it would just wouldn't make sense. Else, if there is no operand and there is no num1, then the value that you enter becomes the num1. Else, if there is no operand, but there is a num1, less than 10, then keep adding to num1, and that will allow you to add up to 10 times in your num1. Uh, if there is no num2, and there is an operand, so let's say one plus, right, we don't have, we have a num1 and an operand, we don't have a num2 yet, then it will allow you to add the value to num2. And uh, this piece here, the else if, will allow you to add it to that num2 10 times. Okay, so that's how that logic is working there, to add your numbers to the object of either num1 or num2 key. Okay, now let's look at the function add operator. And, and this one took a while to figure out how to do it, but basically what this function needs to allow me to do is continuing to add an operator and providing a product without actually hitting the equals button. So if I hit one plus one, right, that equals two plus one, three plus one, four. So that's what this is doing here. I'm not hitting the equals button, but it is returning the product and adding on that operator so that I can continue uh, manipulating a number. So that's what this function is doing here. So it's telling, it's saying if there's already a product and an operand and a num two, then pass these values into the operate function, which then 
uh, operates on a number based on what operand you're using and then it updates the current text content to provide the product of that and then also add in the operand that you are selecting and then it updates the operand within the object uh, and else if there is a num1 and an operand a num2 then it's going to do the same thing so basically product and num1 are more or less interchangeable in these two uh, however if there is no num1 and there is no product then it's going to return false right so that's just like here there is no num1 there is no product so you're not able to hit any of these operands uh, else if there is a num1 right so we have a blank sheet and now we just have a num a num1 and now we have a new operand then it passes that into the object and updates the text um, and otherwise it does the same thing if it's a product again because product is very similar this is it's basically analogous with a num1 okay adding in the decimal point it was tricky here because you're only supposed to uh, allow one decimal right you can't have a number with multiple decimals so the point button has an event listener click and then it executes the add point function uh, so in this one if there is no num1 and there and there is no product in the object then it's going to enter in zero point right so right now there's no num1 no no uh, product it enters in zero point and it updates that in the screen else if there is a num1 and there is no operand and there is no um, existing decimal then it's going to allow that decimal within there so again that is if there is a num1 and no operand so if you see 25 is a num1 there's no operand or here's my decimal it's allowing that in but I can't hit it again because there is a decimal present right that's what this is looking for uh, if there is a num1 and an operand and no num2 then the same thing add in a zero point uh, and if there is a num2 and there is no decimal then allow one decimal else if there is product operand and no num2 then again allow zero point and, and update the screen so that's how I achieve just the one decimal place and then to delete the last entry again add an event listener to the delete button and execute delete fast fun delete last function so if there is a num1 and no operand then you're going to slice the string so you, you actually create a string um, and you slice it and then you you set the object equal to that new string and then you update the screen if there is no num1 but there is an operand and there is no num I'm going to delete the operand sorry uh, if there is a num2 then you'll do the same as what you did to the num1 you'll create a new string and you'll slice which removes the last value from the string okay and now a clear button so on the clear button we add an event list and a click and clear all so that clear all button just empties out the object and then clears the text content on the screen you now have an empty object and an empty output okay the equals button here and it's saying if there is no num2 return false right so if we go in five plus well it's going to return false else if there is no product in the object then pass it the into the operate function num1 operand and num2 and then play the music which is the cow noise else if there is a product which is again analogous to num1 pass in the offer and operand and num2 and what that's doing is passing it into these operate function down here passing in value a and operator and value b if the operator is plus then you're going to pass to addition a b which is going to be down here you're passing in a b and you're saying let the result equal to number a plus the number b so this is actually where the core arithmetic function is taking place in this whole javascript and this is how we started out the entire calculator was with these bare bones functions getting them to work and then you're just cleaning up the output to two decimal places and clearing your object so you're ready for a new set of calculations okay there's a lot going on here and hopefully that made sense to you it was tough for me to come back to this after three months and figure out exactly what i did here again please uh, post your repository in the comments make comments and I'd be happy uh, to discuss this project with you. Good luck.